In this video, I'm gonna show you one of the best deep bomb passing concepts in Madden 23. You can do this out of pretty much any uh, bunch tied in in the game because most of them come equipped with PA boot over or PAL cross. And we're gonna show you how to bomb literally every coverage in the game for a one play score. Now, if you wanna get my entire uh, Madden 23 bunch tied in offensive ebook, make sure to join the Patreon. The link's in the description. 10 bucks will get you access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, including uh, the bunch tied in offensive ebook. All right, guys, so we are in the run heavy playbook uh, today. That's what I actually did the ebook on specifically, but you can apply a lot of this stuff to any other bunch tight end that you see. Um, and PA boot over PAL cross is the play. Now, the setup that we're going to utilize for this is we want to make sure a couple things. We want to make sure that our bunch is to the wide side of the field. Okay, so if we're on the right hash mark, we can call it normal. If we're on the left hash mark, we might need to change uh, where the routes are. And um, for the first one here, we'll just use a cover one style main coverage, if you will. Uh, but basically what you're going to do, and that, the beauty of this concept is it has other reads as well that can beat both man and zone pretty consistently, okay? Um, but here's the setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to streak the slot receiver. And really the best route on the formation is this deep post route. It's going to run about 15 yards. You can smart route it if you want to. Um, but I typically like to just let it run. And then we're going to uh, slant route our inside bunch tight end or our inside bunch receiver. And then with our tight end, um, you have a couple options. I like to put him on a tight end apprentice post. If you don't have tight end apprentice or hot route master, we can, you can certainly put him on a smart routed in route as well. Okay. But I like the post. And what you'll see with this play is if we have time, this post, because it takes so long for it to cut, even though you see right there, like he looks like he's going to play it, you're able to freeform up and over the top of the defender. So you're basically just freeforming it up into the outside. And a lot of times you're going to get this kind of animation for one play score. Now, like I said, I did want to quickly point out, especially against man, because you're going to play a lot of man this year. Um, if the slants open, I really recommend just taking the slant. Like you, a lot of times you can throw that slant uh, with an inside pass lead. There he had a, I think I had a KO there or whatever. But a lot of times, you know, I would just take the slant if the slant's there or the tight end post, if the tight end's there. And basically what this does is it forces your user to get in the habit of I have to kind of lurk the slant to the post, right? Um, and, and then if I don't do that, then they're going to be able to take these easy completions underneath. So what this does is you know maybe in a situation like this now the user is sitting over the middle of the field and he's like well i've gotta you know i've gotta lurk you know the underneath stuff and then the second he does that the second he lurks these underneath routes then as you see here again free form up and over the top of the defender that time we didn't win if he doesn't get like that instant separation then you do want to go ahead and like you know the play is kind of dead at that point in the sense of the the bomb portion of it um typically though he will and if you're ever struggling with this again just you can mess around with smart routing it or not smart routing it um, sometimes there's kind of, you know, it, it, it can change, but you see right there, like freeform inside the KO is going to light up. But as you can see, I mean, he's, he's got a really good shot at being able to uh, be a potential one play score against man. Um, and then again, against zone, uh, this play is incredible at, you know, bombing pretty much every zone in the game over the top. If it's not there though, you can check it down to these other receivers. There you see a little better animation in that time. Uh, we're able to, to score over the top, okay? So that's the man portion of this. Um, and then I want to move quickly to the zone portion. So the zone portion of this bomb, uh, we'll start with uh, we'll start with cover three. I'm going to do it out of wide, though, uh, just because I think it's a little bit better. So, again, just a basic, uh, basic style kind of cover three. Can I not put him in a hook curl? Maybe I can't. There we go. Okay. So again, just kind of a basic style cover three, maybe a double flat, if you will, right? Um, kind of anticipating that we are going to have some time for this. If they are going to blitz us, I'll show you what to do in a second. Um, but basically, here we go. And then what you'll see is against cover three, this just crucifies cover three over the top. As you see, you want to freeform it up and over that outside third. Um, typically, what will happen is that was that um, that was a bad. Uh, pass lead but typically what will happen especially if they press their cover three is the slant route will hold the third for just a second so you see there see how that slant route kind of makes them pause and then you're going to freeform it up and if they have a ko they have a ko but if they don't have a ko 
it's wide open. Now, if you're playing someone and let's say you wanted a little bit more systematic read, this is actually, I think, a really underrated concept um, just because of how well it does against cover three. But basically, you want to smart route the post. And what you'll see here is you're going to throw it a little earlier. So you're going to throw it right in here and you're just going to ag it before it gets to the third. So if you're if they have you know KOs and they're giving you trouble, that's a great way to just still be able to utilize the play. Um, you know, even if they even if they play it well, okay. Most of the time, though, um, especially a lot of people like let's, let's say his baseline dollar, um, maybe they'll put a quarter over there to stop a crosser, um, which we'll go to cover four in a minute. But you'll see a lot of times this has this can get deep enough before the corner can kind of play it. If they have a KO, though, it is a little bit of a tighter throw, okay? Um, cover four drop. So cover four drop, um, pretty interesting play here. So what you'll see against cover four drop is because of this, where we're at in the terms of the hash marks, as they get crazy shedded, that's insane. Um, with, with cover four drop, uh, what you want to do is you want to wait for him to pass that inside quarter. Okay, now again, I'll show you a couple things here. So the first thing I want to show you is if you want to throw the ball right here, you can ag this in front of that KO. Okay, just like in cover three, you can ag the, the post in the middle of the field, which is great um, because it forces them to have to use that deep post and then it can open up the tight end routes and, and other things that we have um, in this formation. Okay, now if you smart route this route against zone, it'll run a little faster. So you'll get him across and that will happen from time to time where he just plays it. I don't know why it's a little different. It's because the bumping this year is so weird and random. Um, but there are also times uh, where he won't bump, okay? He won't bump. So, you know, you just kind of got to roll with it a little bit. Again, you've got your slant, you've got your post, you've got check downs. Like right there, see how he doesn't, see how he didn't play him? Now, I didn't throw it on time, but you see how the bump didn't happen and he was wide open? That is, um, that's pretty fairly normally what happens, okay? Um, occasionally, yes, it will, you know, yes, he'll bump or whatever. But a lot of times what happens is he will cross him. And when he crosses the face, you free form up and outside. And you give yourself a chance um, over the top, okay? So that's cover four. Um, that's what I like to do in terms of trying to bomb it. Now, again, if your slant and post routes are open, I really recommend just taking your slant post. You have a slant post concept here, um, but you'll see here, free form to the right, perfect timing that time, and you see pretty big play against cover four, okay? So cover four, cover three, uh, and then cover two. So cover two, I actually think is kind of the most interesting one. So with cover two, uh, what you'll see here is this deep half actually, um, he actually can kind of play this, which is kind of weird because last uh, last year, and not that deep halves are a good zone, um, but last year deep halves really got pulled by these uh, quick slants. This year, not so much. Um, they don't get as pulled out of the way. But you'll see here, all you got to do is freeform it up. And a lot of times you get that animation right there and you can get this over the top of a cover two. Now, if they are perennially sitting in a cover two, my recommendation, um, so like if they're calling cover two again and again and again, um, pretty simple in terms of what you need to do. All you're gonna do is you're going to still slant Eric Berry, you're still gonna streak, everything's the same, except now you're gonna corner out your tight end and you're gonna motion snap Barry and snap him about right here. And what you'll see is this will just crucify cover two as you can see. So this is how I like to run Pibut over in the sense of making it more of a bomb play. Um, if you guys want to get the rest of the bunch tied in offensive ebook, the links down in the description below. Oh, I forgot to tell you real quick. What do you do against five man pressure with this? So if you think about five man pressure, um, so five man pressure, they can pretty much put their zones in just a couple of different spots. Typically it's going to be something like this with the user in the middle of the field. The problem with this is this is where the slant post concept just kills it because you have these streaks and you're blocking uh, your running back here. So if you ever see pressure, they're probably going to shed you before your bomb can develop. So you want to try to alert or hit your slant post and you would do that against man as well. Uh, pretty easy way to beat the blitz. Thanks for watching the video. Head down to the description. Go check out the Patreon. Ten bucks gets you access to all of the ebooks, everything for just ten bucks. The link's down in the description.